Hello friends. Welcome to the new episode of Backside Story: Musings of a Gastroenterologist. New post. Do you want to sleep smarter and sounder? Evidence-based snooze tips. Sleep is an important biologic process critical to optimal health and bodily functions. In my last post, I discussed the duration of sleep needed to maintain adequate health and that it depends upon one's age. What happens if one doesn't sleep enough? Sufficient duration, high quality, proper timing and regularity and the absence of sleep disturbances or disorders characterize a healthful sleep. Isn't it astonishing that despite the significance of high quality sleep, up to 70 million people in the US and approximately 45 million people in Europe have a chronic sleep disorder and that it impacts their daily functioning and health. Insufficient sleep has severe adverse impacts on our daily performance. For example, About 20% of the serious injuries resulting from car crashes can be associated with driver sleepiness and that is independent of the effects of alcohol. Furthermore, people with sleep disorders are 7 times more likely to have a work-related accident as compared to healthy sleepers. Also, data from healthcare is even more astounding. Nurses that work 12 and a half hours shifts commit 3 times more medical errors than nurses working 8 and a half hour shifts. Unhealthy sleeping has both short-term and long-term health consequences. Over short term, it causes stress, emotional disturbance, mood disorders, psychological issues, or vague physical complaints such as fatigue, pain, malaise. However, long-term health effects of sleep disturbances include high blood pressure, increased risk of lipid or cholesterol disorders, heart disease, excessive weight gain or obesity, and type 2 diabetes. Additionally, it can increase the risk of certain cancers and even death. Sleep disruptions also worsen gastrointestinal health such as exacerbate IBS or inflammatory bowel disease, increase the severity of acid reflux, alter our bowel habits and so forth. Now, let me change gears and enlist a series of guidelines derived from science to enable and encourage sleep optimization. Interestingly, these strategies are deceptively simple, but when implemented together are potentially very powerful and effective. Number 1. Substance-free sleep is maximally restful. We rely so much on caffeine to arouse us in the morning and alcohol or potentially other sedating drugs to tranquilize our busy minds in the evening. Caffeine Use establishes a vicious cycle of sleep disruption. This leads to more exhaustion causing us to consume more caffeine, thus perpetuating poor sleep and intensifying our caffeine consumption. Similarly, although alcohol may cause us to fall asleep faster, it disturbs the quality and stages of sleep and can also impair critical sleep dependent processes such as strengthening our memory number 2 technology and light emissions are double whammy to our sleep multiple research studies prove that exposure to sustained periods of darkness is critical to our health dimmer light signals our brain to release a natural chemical called melatonin this makes us sleepy The light from electronic devices such as iPads or iPhones, TVs and computers may be sufficient to suppress 
the release of melatonin. Furthermore, it is not only the light that is problematic, but also watching programs that are stressful or arousing can add to sleep disruption. Thus, practicing an electronic curfew for 30 to 60 minutes before target bedtime is an effective intervention to improve sleep. Number 3. Avoid naps. Naps are largely a luxury for most of us. These do reduce our ability to have a restful and timely sleep. If one must take a nap, it should be before 3 p.m. and ideally for just 20 minutes or less. Number 4. Anxiety and worrying would cause poor sleep. It is common for some of us that when our heads finally hit the pillow, we start thinking and processing our days. This mulling over the day at bedtime is unhealthy and anxiety provoking. In order to evoke positive emotion brain circuitry, practice gratitude and happiness. Recall three things from the day that you are thankful for and three incidents that made you happy. Try to picture the event and relive the experience. This will improve your siesta time. Number 5. Be consistent in a bedtime routine. At what time we wake up is usually fixed depending upon our work or school schedules. Thus, in order to get adequate sleep, we must fix the time we start our slumber. If you are in a habit of sleeping late, Every three to four days, spring your bedtime forward by 20 minutes. If you try to make larger adjustments, you'll find yourself lying in bed awake. Body prefers to have a set routine. So it is prudent to keep wake times also very consistent across weekdays and weekends. Number six, have realistic expectations. Few people get into bed and quickly fall asleep. Majority, however, typically require 10 to 30 minutes to sleep after the lights are turned off. Thus, having transitional strategies may help to fall and stay asleep, such as pre-bed warm shower, positive thoughts or journaling as outlined above, or a calming natural music, and so forth. Number 7. Rise up routines. It is normal for most of us to feel groggy, have sore shoulders and heavy eyes when we first wake up. These unpleasant feelings are not a sign that we should stay in bed longer. These feelings wane rather quickly, usually in 5 to 20 minutes. Thus, it is recommended to have a rise up routine. This acronym stands for R. Refrain from snoozing. I. Increase activity. S. Shower or wash face or hands. E. Expose yourself to sunlight such as by opening curtains and looking out. U. Upbeat music. And P. Phone a friend or talk to someone. You can personalize the routine according to what works for you. The goal is to emphasize the body to get out of bed and be awake. I hope these tips help you improve your sleep routines and quality and take you on the path to wellness and sound health. I would like to end the post by this quote from Rita Rudner, an American comedian. I love to sleep. Do you? Isn't it great? It really is the best of both worlds. You get to be alive and unconscious. Do you have sleep problems or issues? What strategies have worked for you to improve your siesta time? I welcome your thoughts, feedback or comments on this post. What additional health topics would you want me to talk about? Thank you very much for listening or reading.
keep smiling. Please subscribe, share and comment. For a full written transcript of this article, please visit my blog site. Click the link in the comments below. Thank you so much.